Welcome back to another how-to series video by Trend Micro. My name is Michael Clifford. I'm a support engineer here at Trend Micro. I support products such as Apex One and Apex Central. Today we're just going to go through the Apex Central server setup. So where I'm at right now, I just ran the setup as administrator, so you don't have to see it loading up. It only takes a couple of minutes, but let's save a couple minutes, shall we? So right here, you just go ahead and click next. It takes you to the license agreement. As it says here, it's important to read carefully. Um, I've read this carefully many a time, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click yes. So there are prerequisites for Apex Central, and I highly recommend looking at the upgrade guide or the administrator guide for these. We'll have those linked in this video. Uh, also, if you do forget, like you just missed one, you've gone through it, <laughs> you think you got them all, but you missed one, it'll let you know, and it'll just pop up with an okay button over here or a little box, and it'll say, you need to install this uh, component as a prerequisite. So I've already done that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click next. This is the installation path for the server. Make sure to change this to whatever your organizational needs are. And it tells you the required disk space. If you are installing SQL Express on here, make sure you have enough disk space for the SQL Server Express, as well as any database growth for all the logs that'll be received from your Apex uh, Central agents, such as Apex One. So this is where you go ahead and type in your activation code. Uh, since I find that to be very private information, I'm gonna pause the video and enter that right now. And we're back. So all I've done so far is enter in the registration key and click next. And you come with the designation of the IIS website. Now, since we installed it, just uh, bear with no other websites. All we have is the default website. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. However, you can create a different website and put it in there. The communication, uh, I'm leaving it as the IP address. However, you can select the host name, IP address, or IPv6 if you have one. As you can see, it's just a loop back, so <laughs> I'm just gonna leave this as the IP address. The SSL port, uh, you could change this right off the bat. However, I'm gonna leave it as 443 since it's my only web console on this server. This is where you specify the location for backup and authentication files for your Apex Central agents. So make sure you have this handy. You can import this from your existing control manager and that way the authentication used by your control manager agents when migrating over won't change. So it's important to leave this in somewhere handy. You can change the directory, of course. And this is where you would specify all of your root account information. So the root account is your base master admin account I would recommend naming this something neutral for your organization because it might be shared amongst different administrators. So I went ahead and filled in all this information previously. That's why it's filled in. However, this will all be blank. There are password requirements now. So this is something new to Apex Central. Uh, before you can name the password anything you want, but now you need to have at least a minimum specification of password complexity. Look at that email. Don't spam me. Once you get past that, you get to the install screen for uh, either Microsoft SQL Express or the specification of an external SQL server. I have an external SQL server uh, and we're gonna go ahead and enter that information right now. It's important to note that the SQL account you're using does require very specific permissions and that'll be located within our other videos or our admin guide so you can define exactly what permissions you have so it, the account itself doesn't have overly large permissions such as the SA account, which I'm using here for ease of use. You can specify the database name down here and uh, you can name this whatever your convention is for your organization or just leave it there. Just make sure you know exactly what it's called because if we ever need to troubleshoot any issues on your Apex Central server, we're gonna likely need this database. This little pop-up just says that it cannot find the database name. If there is an existing one, it'll find it and attach to it. So we're doing a new, new install. So we're okay with this. This is fine. All right, and it's off. It'll install a few of the prerequisites, such as this Visual C++ redistributable. I'm not gonna waste too much of your time watching all the bars fill up, so I'm gonna pause the video and we'll come back once it's fully installed. And we're back. So the install just completed, all the bars filled up appropriately, and now we're left at this screen. So you can see the installation is complete, and we have a nice little checkbox here to launch the Apex Central web console, and we're gonna go ahead and do that just to verify everything is up and running. I haven't set up my Internet Explorer yet, so we'll just uh, not use recommended settings. It's fine. <laughs> oh, welcome to Internet Explorer. So you can always change this to have your CA issue assert to the server. Uh, so you don't get this, you know, certificate error whenever you log in. 
So the first time log in, you would just specify the root account you made previously. And we'll go ahead and do that, log in. And here we are. So it gives you a quick start guide. And this will be for every user that logs in for the first time. It's user specific. So we're going to close that out and we're ready. So now all we have to do is register our Apex One to the Apex Central as well as our other products. And we'll begin doing all the uh, fun things such as policy management and uh, command tracking, uh, uh, j just a whole bunch of stuff. And we'll have videos on each and every single uh, one of these items over the course of time. So for now, that's pretty much it for the install. So catch us on our later installs when we register the Apex One, set up users, do AD synchronization, and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Until next time, bye.